Hello everybody, my name is Nihil and I'm back with my Hammer tutorial series. And this time around we're going to talk about displacements. And I just spent 30 minutes recording this exact tutorial and then I realized I hadn't actually pushed the record button. So uh, yeah, there's that. Now on the upside that means I now that's this time around actually do know what I'm talking about as opposed to last time. <laughs> um, before we dive into displacements, uh, a quick thing. Um, when it comes to hammer, okay, I'm calling this advanced. And the idea is, I'm not going to go over simple how to make brushes, how to like, just, I wouldn't really just cover how to make a displacement because that's been done before. There's plenty of beautiful, perfect tutorials out there. I do want to cover it in practice. Like if you really do use them, you know, how do you use them? Not just how do you make them? Um, but another thing that comes up a lot is once you understand the basics of hammer and you're capable of making brushes, you will suddenly discover at some point that there's actually a lot of different ways you can make your level, right? Like your brushes. One thing, just a very basic thing is corners, okay? Um, you can make them in different ways. For example, you can make them like this. Okay, if this was a corner of your level, you could make it like, like this. And that's okay, that's totally valid. You can make them um, like this. Ooh, there we go. Right, you can make it like this. Um, and you can make it the other way around. You could take this side and then take this side like this, right? This also works. So, um, and then there's the way that I had it set up before, which is this. Um, so the question is, which one do you pick? And um, ultimately that's down to the mapper, but I'd argue that this is kind of the best way because it's it creates a nice look, first of all, it creates a full corner. But also, if you did have it the other way around, for example, um, this, this way around. If you did want to texture this side at some point, you would be able to texture this, but then when you texture this, you need to actually select two faces, and it's very easy to miss this little bit of the other brush. That's just not very elegant. So now that we have that covered, let's actually talk about displacements. I've made this little segment of a level here already. Let's pretend there's more level here and there's more level over there, obviously. Um, um, before I actually do, do that, I do want to quickly also mention again, we have two different textures that kind of go together and then line up every now and then. And then at the corners, they're all kind of aligned to each other. Just wanted to mention that again and again and again. That's super, super important. Never, ever skip on that um, because it will immediately break the look of your level. All right, so displacements. So when we talk about displacements, we need to always start out with brushes. So let's just fill our level in with brushes. Um, we are just going to put it in like this right now. Obviously, uh, we are going to use the top face of this because we want to make a floor. So let's just push this down. Now we have it pushed down. Uh, I don't think it needs to be this uh, big. As soon as we turn this into a displacement, everything but the displacement, so the top face, is going to disappear and like actually disappear in Hammer. <laughs> so um, it re doesn't really matter how large you make it, but I like to pick 64 because I think it shouldn't be more extreme than that anyways. And it just kind of, kind of becomes a little bit awkward in my opinion. So that's why I go with 64 height for my displacement, at least in this case I would. Um, and of course, we're gonna also need a displacement for this side, so we'll just quickly make a brush over here as well and that works for now. All right now it's displacement time so let's select this don't ever forget select shift A and select the top face uh, do not have the entire thing selected otherwise you'll get multiple displacements everything um, well when everything is clear and set up here so you have the top face selected you go to displacement and you can create your displacement now um, power of three the power means how fine the resolution is of your displacement so um, it's kind of like when we talked about the arches in the last video um, you know the more vertices you get the the nicer it looks but also the slower it gets in the game and in hammer and then if you do select the power of two for example it gets very kind of rough and blocky so for this I'd suggest just power three or power four. And now this is a displacement. The rest of the brush has disappeared. At every point in time, can just click destroy and we get original brush back. But of course, right now we do want to use a displacement on here. And then now comes the part where I think you should maybe just look at other tutorials, how to draw, because I mean, what's there to say? I, I'd suggest taking spatial off sometimes, at least for, for raising and lowering. I'd suggest going with the low distance. And then what we can really do is just kind of 
draw our displacement in. And I, I like to overdo it a lot like this. And then actually later on, I, I, I select smooth and I, I uh, turn spatial back on, turn the radius up and kind of just go over it once like this. And now it's still, it looks like it's, it's just a bit more subtle. Okay. Um, and then I am simply going to go ahead and uh, bring this entire thing up a little bit. So raise lower on a giant radius and then we can just kind of bring it up and this is obviously too far so we can just bring it back down and we can basically play around with it until we have it in a position that we like and there's plenty of different ways you can work with displacements this is probably not the best one but it doesn't matter i mean you're free to do to, to be artistic here it's drawing it's what else is there to say right um now of course we also want to do the same for the other side so shift and a we just select this side displacement oops create power of three and we can do the same thing here really quickly. Just uh, turn spatial off for now and just kind of do the same thing, really. Like, I'm just gonna do whatever, really. Um, smooth, spatial, and then just kind of smooth it out. Uh, this is actually a little bit too smooth. So let's go back in, turn the radius down, just kind of, oops, do this again. Hope this time it will be a little bit better. And then smooth. And just kind of like that. Um, all right, now the problem that arises is that these don't be, like fit together, right? These two displacements do not fit together. What do you do for that is sewing. You sew them together. Um, if you just select both sides and click sew, it will just work on one vertex and it won't really do much. So that's not what we want. That's because there's a requirement. If you want to sew displacements together, they have to fit together as far as the vertices are concerned. So first solution, add one for the corner piece. Now you need to select all three of them because if you just select two and you uh, displace sew and then take these two and sew, this has changed this vertex because this vertex belongs to three displacements. This one, this one, and this one. So it can't do it, so you need to select all three and you can do that. Just hit sew and then it works. However, so it's a perfectly workable solution. However, it's not really the most optimized. It's not the most efficient one and it's not the most logical one either. Again, this is where the uh, corner thing comes in. We, are, we can use the same sort of trick, quote unquote, here that we used on the walls. Okay, so when we're talked about these, this is the same idea because now we have just one displacement less and displacements can be at least a little uh, expensive so you do want to use these kinds of micro optimizations wherever you can it's just good style so now we have these two sewn together and now they look nice and we can continue to update them if we did want to um, change something along the fringe here and we can probably show you that uh, click displacement and, and paint geometry raise lower uh, turn spatial off maybe and then if we were going to say raise this vertex here like this there's an issue because again we now we need to go back out of this select this one and hit sue um, now if we do want to do that a little bit more efficiently we can just click auto sue down here and this will do this automatically so now you can see this acts like one big displacement and that's what we wanted. So that's really cool. Uh, in general, if you think about displacements, what I'd say is uh, try and uh, kind of uh, make um, the center of the displacement generally lower and the sides of the displacement generally higher. It's just kind of as a real realism thing, how in real life there would be like heavier vehicles. If this was a road, there'd be like heavier vehicles or, or whatever going to the center, towards the center of the road, while the lighter, you know, human beings or something they would maybe travel along the sides so that's generally what you kind of want to do if you uh, take a look for example at mirage they do that as well or dust too or something um now let's talk about texturing so of course we can just select the uh the the surfaces here and we can just throw any kind of texture on there um anything literally that we want uh i don't know like let's pick something like for example, this one, apply that and hide the mask. Now this technically works. What's the issue with this? Well, it you can see here, this is a texture that has tiles. If you think about it, tiles are very straight and hard stone. They wouldn't really deform like that. They wouldn't look this organic. So you do want to pick an organic texture and it will look better. So this kind of doesn't make any sense. Um, so let's pick an organic texture here. Um, that makes a little bit more sense. 
and I'm sure we're gonna find something here at some point. Um, for example, here, that's nicely organic, right? This is kind of like a, a grass surface. This is organic, this would actually in real life maybe look like this. So it's just, it's a thing to think about. Another thing when it comes to texturing displacements is that you uh, have a feature that's called alpha uh, painting or alpha, alpha blending. So if you pick a texture like the one that we just picked and that has the name blend in it, you generally, that means you can click paint alpha and you can actually paint alpha. So what I'm doing right here is alpha painting. I'm blending two textures together. Essentially, I'm drawing over the texture, okay? And you can select your strength of the brush here. So now you can actually go ahead and do something really cool here in Hammer that gives you uh, the, the capability of, of doing really way more detailed uh, you know, surfaces uh, than you otherwise would be able to do because this just wouldn't work with regular textures. That's why the feature exists. So right now I'm kind of just blending something together here really quickly, but you can see how nice this looks with two different textures. If they don't show up, make sure that you're in textured mode because if you go into shaded textured polygons, for some reason this doesn't work, okay? So just always be in 3D textured uh, and it will work for you. And you will see it in Hammer. Um, so that's alpha blending. That's another really, really cool and useful thing. So the very last thing I do want to cover today when it comes to displacements is now that we kind of know how to make them, is kind of how to use them in a real map, how to apply the knowledge that we just gained. And the thing is, if you, this was a real map, um, if you go to this group's auto, you can turn off displacements. This is what the compiler sees. In other words, displacements are invisible. They don't exist for the this compiler. Okay, so that means that you will have a leak. This this is a giant leak. Like pretend there would be a skybox here, pretend there'd be more level over there, but this floor would be missing. You would your map would leak. And that's obviously very bad because the map can have leaks. So how what do we do? What do people generally do? Well, they build what I'd call a mold, or I usually rather call it a swimming pool almost. Um, so this is the way it works. We take these walls, for example, hold shift, down, let go of shift, down, 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 down. Uh, we can use the same height that we used for our displacement here. So 64, then we browse for no draw, select and apply that just to make sure these uh, swimming pool walls, as I call them, they don't have any textures. They should be full no draw. And um, you can probably already tell what's going on here. Again, I'm going to use the same trick like this. And there we go. We have a little floor and uh, we're going to put the floor down a little bit and copy this over. We can, for example, just use the vertex tool to do this. It's just one of the ways that you can make this work. And now we have what I call a swimming pool. Okay, if I hide the displacement, you can see this is kind of like a little f extra floor, like a, like a swimming pool, right? Um, and this now means while these are no draws, uh, so they, they don't actually kill your FPS, they, they don't really matter. However, they do matter in the sense that they block the vis, so they block the leak. So with this, you will not get a leak. So that's what you need to do whenever you work with displacements if you don't want to get leaks, okay? Build every displacement gets a little swimming pool area like this so you don't get any leaks. And that's pretty much it. Um, as far as I know, I've covered the basics of displacements. Um, there's some other things. You can uh, use displacements and just use the paint alpha feature without deforming the surface. Uh, if you just want to use some different textures and you can, you don't have to use uh, them for the ground. You can use them for the sides, for walls, for whatever you want to, or even for the ceiling. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the very cool feedback so far. I definitely appreciate that. It motivates me a lot to do more of these and to kind of share whatever couple of little things that I do know about Hammer and have already learned something from you guys as well. So please do keep commenting and, and keep giving me suggestions. This was actually suggested by a user, this topic. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have covered it. Um, so keep doing that. And that's really awesome. Thank you for watching. My name's been Nihil and until next time. Bye bye.